welcome everyone. I'm Melissa Joles, Director of Marketing for RDA. We are very honored to have Mike Anderson of Collision Advice with us today. Mike's the beating heart of the industry and is here to fill us in on navigating the future with COVID-19. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a brief introduction of who we are. RDA is a group of independent PBE distributors throughout the United States. Our goal is to provide our members and their Collision Shop customers marketing and sales support. And to find out more about RDA, you can go to our website at www.rda-impact.com. The presentation will take approximately 60 to 90 minutes, depending on questions. We are recording it, and we'll post it on our YouTube channel. If you have questions during the webinar, you can type them in the chat box at the bottom right of the screen, and Mike will answer them during the presentation. Now I'll turn it over to Mike. Hey, thank you so much, Melissa. And just a big shout out to everybody that's on the webinar today. I see a lot of my great friends from Highline Distributors. Man, much love to all of you, um, to you know, Marlene, to Brian, uh, just to Alicia, and to everybody. So thank you so much. So uh, my name is Mike Anderson, the owner of Collision Advice, and I also have with me today uh, Trent Tinsley uh, from Integral, which is a sister company of Enterprise. So Trent, are you with us today? I am indeed, Mike. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Trent. Appreciate it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have to begin every webinar by sharing in our trust guidelines. So please bear with me as I read through this. It is understood that in today's webinar, we will not discuss any issues that would violate antitrust guidelines. Avoiding violations of the antitrust laws is the responsibility and legal obligation of the business owner. Any discussion of current prices or discounts with a competitor should be avoided. And in our industry, this includes discounts, time hourly rates, charges to insurance companies, individuals, fleet owners, dealers, or other shops or repair vehicles. Surveys of prices, discounts, and costs are permissible, but only under strict guidelines, and only if they're not part of conspiracy to fix prices or otherwise restrain trade. Cost studies that lead to price fixing and price stabilizing agreements would violate both the United States and Canadian antitrust laws. Remember, the prices you charge must be calculated and determined by you, the business owner, alone, and these prices should take into account the cost of doing business and include allowances for a reasonable profit. All content of this webinar is based on standard economic and management principles. Profit margins, labor rates, etc. used in this presentation are to be taken as examples only. And the intent of this webinar is to provide attendees with basic management skills, leaving them free to determine their own individual rates, profit percentages, and other operating management aspects of their businesses on a strictly independent basis using generally accepted management principles. So that's a mouthful, but we got that out of the way. Now, keep in mind, everybody has been muted, but questions are encouraged. So if you have any questions, during the webinar, feel free to use the chat or questions feature in the GoToWebinar panel, and Melissa will ask me your questions. She'll interrupt me and ask them. And as Melissa shared, a recording of this webinar will be made available after the webinar and will be hosted on the RDA Impact YouTube channel. So if you go to rda-impact.com, you will look in the upper right-hand corner and you will see where it says training videos. And I would encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to go to that section, their YouTube channel, because there's a ton of other videos on there ton of other webinar content from people who you know, they are much greater presenters than me. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. And again, a big shout out to RDA for having me today. So ladies and gentlemen, obviously COVID-19 is the top of everybody's mind today, right? I mean, you can't you know, go on social media, read the news. You can't even talk to anybody without thinking about COVID-19. So let me just share with you real quickly what I'm hearing from around the country. As many of you know, I do a lot of 20 groups and I have a lot of private clients I work with as well as car manufacturers or some insurers that I consult for. And ladies and gentlemen, here's what I can tell you. I can tell you that, uh, you know, say back in about the middle of May, uh, claims count around the country was down about 40%. Now, that's all of the United States, including Hawaii and Alaska. I will tell you that within the past 30 days, uh, claims count uh, kind of picked back up again a little bit, where we were only down about 35%. But ladies and gentlemen, what I will tell you is it is very geographical driven, right? If you look at Montana, you look at certain parts of Louisiana, you look at some parts of Nebraska, North Dakota, they've had some hailstorms, and that has been like manna from heaven for them. So in those areas, people are doing well. But I can also tell you that there's shops down in like Sidewell, Louisiana, where there's still only about 50% claims volume. So ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very geographic driven. But I will tell you, I think there is a lot of good that is going to come out of COVID-19, and I'm going to share that with you today. Now, this is some data my friends from CCC Gaming. This is claims count by state, and I know what you're saying. Hawaii is not on here, but I have the statistics for Hawaii, and I'll tell you what those statistics are in just a moment, as well as Alaska. So if you look at each individual state in the lower 48, or as people in Hawaii refer to it as the mainland, you will see that claims volume across the entire United States in the last 30 days has been down 
year to date, 23%. And in the last seven days, about 42.7%. Now, again, some states have been hit harder than others. If you look at Michigan, Michigan claims are down 55% between April and May, according to what it was pre-COVID. If you look at New Jersey, New York, they've really been the hotbed of COVID-19, and they've actually been hit really, really hard. I can tell you the claims volume data that I'm seeing for the state of Hawaii is that claims are down 50 to 70%. A lot of that, I believe, is because of, um, obviously, I believe that you all had like a quarantine in place where if somebody traveled from the lower 48 or mainland, uh, they'd actually have to be quarantined for a certain amount of time. And from what I understand, talking to some friends of mine in Hawaii, there's still some restrictions on inner island travel. And you also have a lot of tourists that are not coming to Hawaii. So Hawaii has probably been hit as hard, if not harder, than most of the other states in the mainland or the United States of America. Now, let's talk about what else COVID is doing. COVID is impacting the way people live their lives. It's impacting the way people go about their business. If you look at some statistics here right, real quick, and again, these statistics are a compliment of my friend Rachel at CCC, you will see that between March 10th and March you know, 11th, right around that time frame, about 54% of people said, hey, we're washing our hands a lot more frequently. As we got into April, 75% of people are washing their hands much more frequently. Let's talk about social events. Keep in mind, COVID kind of hit right around March 13th, March 15th is when it actually hit in the U.S., right? You know, about 18% of people said we're not attending social events. And now we see that in April, that was up to 70%, right? So at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 has impacted everyone's way of life. And it will continue to do so. And we're going to talk about how those impacts will actually affect the collision repair industry. Now, I have a saying that lots of sales cover lots of sins. Now, if you were in front of me right now, I would actually have you say this out loud. Lots of sales cover lots of sins. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, if you go to church, you know what a sin is, right? It's something you do that's bad. But let's also just say and change the verbiage a little bit. That lots of sales cover lots of mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I believe. I believe that if you were to survey shops in January of 2020 and said, how was your business in 2019? Everybody or most people would have said, my business was great. My sales were up. But ladies and gentlemen, I think that was misleading. You know, I'm going to give you an analogy, right? Let's say you had a pot of boiling water and you put a frog in it. That frog would instantly jump out of that pot of water. Why? Because we're flipping hot, right? But let's say I had a pot of cold water and I put a frog in it and I crank the temperature up by about two to three degrees. You know what? That frog's still in there swimming around, riveting, and you know, ribbit, ribbit, right, and backstroking because he doesn't feel the gradual change. And now I turn the heat up about another three or four degrees, and then a few minutes later, another three or four degrees. Guess what happened to that frog? Eventually, that frog would boil to death, right? Because it was such a gradual change. And ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm going to tell you. COVID-19, we're going to look back on this a year, 18 months from now, and we're going to be thankful it happened. Yeah, you heard me say it. Thankful that it happened. And why is that? because it was a blessing in disguise. And here's why. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a longer term crisis that had been in the making before COVID even hit. And that is the impact of ADAS, right? We know that more and more cars have parking sensors, cameras, you know, um, you know, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitors. And so all of these ADAS features, ladies and gentlemen, were actually impacting claims count. The amount of accidents had declined in 2019 by about two to 3%, depending on where you lived at, right? Now that two to 3%, most shops did not feel that. Why did they not feel it? Number one, because severity was increasing, right? We were getting paid more to fix cars because of you know the calibration charges and the scanning charges. So severity has gone up every year for the past five years, but that increase in severity was masking or covering up the fact that we had less claims count or cars coming to the door. Here's the second thing. You had last year in 2019, you had an all-time low of unemployment. You also had an all-time low of gas prices. That meant more and more people were driving. So the fact that severity went up and more and more people were driving, it kind of masked or covered up the fact that there were less claims count volume because of ADAS. And ladies and gentlemen, what COVID-19 has done is it's given us a look into the future that when you looked at all the experts, you looked at Debbie Day from Mitchell, Susanna Gotch from CCC, you looked at the Insurance Institute of Highway and Safety, they all predicted that in about the next 15 to 20 years, claims counts would be down by about 35% because of ADAS features. 
So ladies and gentlemen, what COVID has done is it's actually given us a chance to look into the future. I'm not talking Michael J. Fox back to the future. I'm talking about it's given us a chance to look into the future, ladies and gentlemen. See, if you look right here at these statistics from CCC, you will see, ladies and gentlemen, that claims count has been declining every year. So again, when you look at this, the red line is collision. The black line is collision and comprehensive claims. If you look at claims count since about 2016, the red line right here where my cursor's at, the amount of claims has been declining by two to 4%. But most shops weren't feeling that. It was like the frog being in a pot of water and the temperature was being gradually turned up. And had COVID-19 not happened, ladies and gentlemen, many of us would have woke up 15 years from now and said, oh my gosh, where did all the cars go? So ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 was a wake up call. But again, as I shared with you, lots of sins cover lots of sales, right? Um, so, I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me. Lots of sales cover lots of sins, excuse me. Tongue tied there. At the end of the day, when you look at severity, severity has been increasing since 2010 because of, you know, again, there's less bumper covers when we repair. There's more calibrations, more scanning. So severity was masking the fact that we had less cars coming to the door. So ladies and gentlemen, let's just kind of recap what I said already, right? Claims count right now because of COVID, depending where you live at, has been down between 35 to 58%. Every state's different. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what our industry is going to look like 15 years from now. Most people, though, were not feeling the impacts of that last year and the year before because of increased severity and more vehicle miles being traveled. So ladies and gentlemen, if you look at what the uh, all of the experts said, right, what the impact that ADAS would have had on claims count or the number of accidents, you will see that from 2017 to 2019, it was about a 4% decline. You can see in 2021, it's going to be about a 5% decline. And in 2049, it would be about a 30% decline. Now, many of you may be saying, you know what, Mike, I don't plan on being in the business in 2049. I plan on retiring. But here's my question for you, ladies and gentlemen, what's your succession plan? Because if you had children that were going to take over your business or you're going to sell it to somebody else and they're going to rent from you, this is still going to impact your life. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we know is that COVID has given us a glimpse into what the future will look like. Now, if let's look at China, right? So I get the opportunity that every week I'm talking to people in China, I'm talking to people in Norway and England. China is kind of a little bit in front of us in regards to COVID-19, right? Now, uh, there's a lot of people that question the data that's coming out of China. They think that maybe they're trying to cover up or falsify some of the data about how bad it really is over there. But what we know, ladies and gentlemen, according to Just Auto News, on June 10th, 2020, when I captured this uh, from an article, it said that their car sales were growing, right? Car sales were growing. And ladies and gentlemen, what I can tell you is that we are seeing the same trends right now in the United States that car sales are actually increasing. There is a General Motors dealership in Miami, Florida called Tropical Chevrolet. In the month of May, they had their best car sales ever in the history of the dealership. I can tell you that Mohawk Honda, uh, a car dealership up in New Jersey, uh, I'm sorry, New York, they had their best month ever in car sales last month. Ladies and gentlemen, car sales are actually increasing. And ladies and gentlemen, you say, well, Mike, what's this got to do with collision repair? Well, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, and I'm going to go back. The predictions were is that if car sales stayed the same, it would take 30 years before ADAS impacted our industry by 35%. This is what if car sales stayed the same. But ladies and gentlemen, because of COVID, the vehicle manufacturers are offering these incentive packages to stimulate and jump new car sales. I actually predict, and if you'll see right here from the Washington Post, May 6, 2020, it talked about how Congress is looking to offer incentive packages to try to stimulate new car sales. And here's the deal. If we jumpstart new car sales, which is happening now, it's going to accelerate that curve of vehicles that have ADAS. And what they thought would take 30 years to happen is going to happen in 7 or 10 or 15 years. So, ladies and gentlemen, COVID is indirectly impacting new car sales which is going to indirectly impact our business because the more cars that have ADAS, the less accidents we will see. So instead of being a, a drop of three to 5% a year, it's going to go to double digits of decrease of accidents a year. And that's the essence of a frog boiling in a pot of water. 
Now, here's the other thing that's coming out of COVID is telecommuting. There were old school businesses that said, you know what? I don't believe in telecommuting. You need to show up every day to work so I can watch you work and make sure you work. COVID forced these old style CEO executives to force them to let people work from home. And guess what happened? They're seeing is good, if not better production from their employees working at home. So now these CEOs are sitting there and saying, you know, do we really need to pay five or $10,000 a month for rent or a mortgage in the utilities when all of our employees can work from home and we can just cut that overhead expense of brick and mortar. So telecommuting is increasing because of COVID-19. Now, obviously telecommuting was increasing. If you look at this gray line right here, you will see that between 2006 and 2015, you know, telecommuting increased by almost 120%. Ladies and gentlemen, that increase now is almost 300%. Now there's two sides to look at this. If people are telecommuting, then they're not driving to work. That has a negative impact on our industry because there's less people driving to work so they don't wreck their car. But the positive of telecommuting is that when you have less people on the road, you have less congestion. And guess what? The people that are on the roads tend to do one thing, and that is they tend to drive faster. They tend to speed. And what that does is that relates to more accidents. But unfortunately, those accidents are either going to be a higher severity or in some cases, total losses. So telecommuting is absolutely going to impact our industry. Now, let's talk about capture rate. When you look at data, and this is courtesy of Ray Chu at CCC, you will see that historically in our collision repair industry, when a vehicle was between a, you know, a, a $1,000 to $10,000 job, our capture rate was about 70 to 72% on average, right? So that means 72% of the people or 76% of the people that had an accident that was between $1,000 to $10,000 jobs, they got their cars fixed. Where we didn't capture a lot of work at was the ROs or repair costs that were less than a thousand. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you wanna thrive and not just survive, I'm not even talking about thriving, I'm talking about dominating, right? If you wanna dominate, you gotta start redefining your thinking as to what's considered a non-drive. Typically, what we think of as a non-drive is it comes in on a tow truck. But ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do is start thinking about asking customers, Mrs. Jones, do you rely on your backup cameras or your sensors. Yes, I do. Well, you know what? Your bumper's been hit and I know it looks minor, but that will impact the ability of those to work accurately. And we've got to start educating consumers about how a minor bumper or a minor mirror hat is actually going to be affecting the way that they might drive because of the fact that they're relying on it, it may not be accurate. And we need to start thinking about those types of vehicles as non-drive and start focusing on trying to capture more of those smaller claims. Now, again, let's just kind of recap where we're at so far, right? Accident frequency is declining due to ADAS. Backup, cameras, parking sensors, blind spot monitors, adaptive cruise control, adaptive headlights, right? All of those things are helping us consumers to have less accidents. So claims count is down. Absolutely, factually, data shows us claims down has been averaging about 2 to 5% decline year over year for the past three to four years. However, most shops were not feeling the heat turned up on the frog and the pot of water because their severity was going up. So they thought that their sales were up, but that was a false sense of security as well as more miles driven. So ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm gonna tell you. What COVID has done is it has helped us to see what the future would look like if claims count accelerates and declines because of ADAS. So what we need to understand is the new KPI that you need to track is how many cars are coming to your shop from each referral source. You gotta start tracking car count to the door. That's the KPI you need to monitor. So first of all, for all of those of you that are using a management system, whether it's PropInet, CCC1, Mitchell's Repair Center, Summit, Rome, whatever it is, every management system gives you the ability to record and ask that customer, how did you find out about me? Ladies and gentlemen, you have to track that data more accurately. And educate your frontline staff, whether it's estimators or CSRs, why it's important to get that information. Now, why is that? Because I wanna know how people found out about me so that I can start to see if my work declines. Let me give you an example. I have a, a client of mine that he did a lot of work for a dealership. And I said, you need to track car count. I'll be honest with you. I have been preaching this statistic and this KPI since last September with my private clients. And every one of my clients that I had focused on this 
is actually kicking butt during COVID, right? Because they were focused on car count to the door. So back to my story, a friend of mine, he was looking at how many um, cars he got referred to him from the dealership every single month. And what he did is he saw that, you know, he used to average about 32 cars a month from the dealership. And then all of a sudden he started to drop down to 27 and then 21 and then it climbed down to 18. And he's like, what do you think's going on here? I said, I'll tell you what's going on. There's probably a new service writer at that dealership and they're sending work to their buddy shop. You need to go talk to them. And sure enough, that's what was happening. So he got the GM involved and they were able to rectify the situation. But had he not been tracking his referrals from that specific referral source, he never would have been aware of the fact that his work was declining from there. Maybe you're a DRP shop and you get a lot of work from a specific DRP. Well, you need to track that. So if you start to see your work decline, you need to be having a conversation with them and saying, why am I not getting as many referrals from you? Is it because my score is not good or because you added more shops? Maybe you're not a DRP and you start to see your work decline from an insurance company. What's that an indicator of? Steering. Yeah, steering. Now, here's the next thing you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at the right-hand side of my screen, it says traditional. So seven to 10 years ago, the way that the average consumer found a body shop was A, they were used to driving by you and they knew where you're at. So your location. They're like, I know where Auto Body Hawaii is located at. I've driven by them 10 times. Or word of mouth, you know, their best friend or family member or somebody they knew would tell them about your shop. Or shops did traditional advertising like Yellow Pages or maybe a website, right? Or billboard. Then what happened is, let's go to the left-hand side of the screen where it says partners. About five to seven years ago, consumers started saying, hey, who do I trust to tell me a good body shop? And they would call their insurance company or their agent and say, do you have a shop in mind? Or they'd call a dealership that did work on their car or an independent mechanical shop, or maybe even ask the tow truck driver. But ladies and gentlemen, today in 2020, how do consumers decide what body shop they're going to use? It's they make those decisions di digitally. That means they're either going to do an organic search, for example, best auto body shop near me, or they're going to look for how many online reviews you have. Or they're going to see something where somebody shared something about your Facebook page or social media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to thrive and not just uh, survive and you want to dominate the closure repair industry, where you need to be focusing your efforts at is having a digital presence. Website, making sure you're updated on all the shop locators for any OEMs or any DRPs you're involved with. You need to make sure that you've got claims your Google business listing page. Ladies and gentlemen, there are tons of things that you need to do in order, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that you have a digital presence. Now, there's another term that's called liquid expectations. And I learned about this from Mark Fincher at CCC. And that is this, right? 10 years ago, when somebody came into your body shop, they would compare their experience at your body shop with other automotive facilities. So like if I came into your shop, I would compare my experience at your body shop with other automotive businesses where I got my oil changed or my car serviced or tires replaced. And then five to seven years ago, everybody started talking about the Nordstrom's experience, right? Uh, when somebody came in your body shop, they were expecting the Nordstrom's experience. You know, you walked out from around the counter, you, uh, you know, greeted the customer, you gave them your business card, you know, the Nordstrom's experience. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about today's consumers. Today's consumers have liquid expectations. What do I mean by that? When we say liquid expectations, liquid means that they are ever changing. Today's consumers, when they want to do business with us in the collision repair sector, they're comparing their experience with a collision repair or auto body shop based on their experience with, with Amazon or Uber or Netflix. Let me give you an example, right? Real, real quick example. And Melissa, I'm going to ask you if you would unmute yourself for a second. So let me ask you a question, Melissa. Melissa, have you ever taken an Uber before, ma'am? Yes. And what kind of receipt did you get? Um, it got electronically, you know, via email. Electronically. So here I am, I take an Uber and I get an electronic receipt, but I come to your body shop and you're still giving me a printed receipt. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to have the ability to offer the customer a printed receipt, an email receipt, or both. Well, let's talk about, you know, Amazon. Melissa, have you ever bought anything on Amazon before? Yes, a lot. <laughs> a lot, yeah, okay. So you can go on Amazon at 2.30 in the morning and order something. People are used to doing business 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can make an Uber reservation at two o'clock in the morning. I can make a reservation at a restaurant prior to COVID through OpenTable. 
I can purchase something 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year through Amazon. They're looking for to do business with you digitally 24 seven, 365 days a year. And that's the experience we're getting compared to, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's another statistic for you, right? There was a statistic that I, I saw that said 36% of all consumers need our services as collision repair professionals outside of normal business hours. Now, when I saw this statistic, I'll be honest with you, I questioned it, so I went and did my own research. But here's what I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, 36% of customers need to do business with us or want to do business with us when we are closed. So that's why as a collision repairer, you must have a digital storefront 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And what is the kind of digital storefront you need to have? Now, I'm not saying you need to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But what we need to do is we need to make sure that people can have access to our availability after hours. Now, let me share some statistics with you, right? If you look at this, 15.36% of accidents in the United States of America occur on a Friday. 17.22% of accidents occur on a Saturday and 15% of accidents occur on a Sunday. That's 47.59% of accidents occur Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, most of you will say, well, Mike, I'm open on a Friday. Yeah, well, hold that thought until I show you what time of day on Friday those accidents occur. Some of you may be hoping on a half day on a Saturday, but wait until I show you what time of day most of those accidents occur. So hold that thought, 47.59% of accidents occur on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But let's look at time of day. 11% of accidents occur between midnight to 3 a.m. 8.3% of accidents occur from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. 17% from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And 15% of accidents, 9 p.m. to midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not know of any collision repair that is open these hours. 51% of accidents occur when we are closed. So ladies and gentlemen, if that's the deal, the people that have access where the customer can book their own appointment or request an estimate after hours, those are the people that are going to dominate. You know, they say winners beat losers, but people that dominate beat the winners. Nobody talks about the team that beat somebody that was 0-16, but everybody talks about the team that beat the team that was 16-0. and 0. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to thrive and not just survive, we've got to learn how to be accessible to customers outside of normal business hours. Now, what do consumers want outside of normal business hours? They want to get an estimate, right? And there's two ways to do that, right? There's Body Shop Booster, Ryan Taylor, and then CCC has their photo estimating app. There may be others, but I'm not privy to those. So the two things that a consumer wants is they want the ability to either request an estimate via photo or book an appointment, right? What we know is that shops that offer the ability for a consumer to book an appointment through their website after hours, their capture rate is 60% higher. And by the way, do you have the book appointment feature tied into your shop's website? Now, here's an example. This is Yates Auto Body, uh, Old Town Auto Body, Yates Collision in Old Town Alexandria. They're in my local market area. If you go to CarWise, car, if you use CCC estimating, you have a free listing on CarWise. It's a consumer facing website. And one of the things that CCC does is on their website, CarWise, they offer the ability for customers to book an appointment, right? Or request an online estimate. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying you got to use CCC to do this. I'm just saying you've got to have the ability for customers to schedule an appointment with you when you are closed, all right? Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, there's some haters out there, right? I get it, right? I'm, I'm gonna sing that Taylor Swift song. Uh, Reset, all about Hawaii, this is for you, Taylor Swift. Hate is going to hate, hate, hate. I know. Stick to estimating, Mike, because you can't sing. You dag on right. I can't sing, Reese. I'm going to own it, right? But here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. There's a difference between trying to settle a claim for $20,000 via photo versus using photos as a marketing strategy. There is a difference. And I'm not saying you try to settle a claim for $10,000 via photo. What I'm saying is if I offer the customer to submit photos to me and then I can reach back out to them, that's a hot lead of somebody that wants me to fix their car. It is a hot lead. So ladies and gentlemen, don't talk yourself out of something because of the, 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 the insurance segment side of the business. Think about photo estimating as a marketing strategy, ladies and gentlemen. Now here's the deal. We know that photo estimating prior to COVID and through 2019, we know that about say 10 to 
of all estimates were done virtually. So I want you to think about this, right? There's a major insurer that I know of prior to COVID, for every dollar they collected in premiums, they were paying out $1.14. Another insurer I know for every dollar they collected in premiums, they're paying out $1.08. Severity is rising, no denying that. So ladies and gentlemen, when you think about this, if the cost to fix cars is increasing, if insurance companies want to remain profitable, they got to figure out how to cut expenses, right? And there's only so much they can do to try to cut severity. So at the end of the day, when you look at the two biggest form of expenses for insurance carriers, guess what it is? It's bricks and mortar, which is buildings and it's people. And ladies and gentlemen, what I can tell you is there were insurers that because of COVID have had to embrace photo estimating and they've had to rely on shops that aren't even DRPs to submit photos and estimates. And I will tell you right now, you're absolutely going to see a whole new insurance model come out of COVID-19 that is going to be better for the shops. I'm going to talk about that in a few moments. But ladies and gentlemen, with loss ratios increasing, insurers got to cut expenses. So prior to 2020, photo estimating was only about 19% of claims, right? And what you saw, ladies and gentlemen, is if you look at this bar right here where my cursor's at, this was claims handled by staff appraisers. You saw that decline. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you because of COVID, you, I, I, I predict that within the next two years, less than 20% of all estimates will be handled by insurance staff appraisers. Matter of fact, I was on the line with an insurance company yesterday on a conference call, a major insurance company in the top five, and they're trying to offer early retirement or um, severance packages to their other staff appraisers because they want to reduce their staff by 30 to 40%. I was on a webinar two weeks ago with another uh, two insurance carriers, and they said that they believe they're going to have to start trying to cross train some of their appraisers because they believe that is like that job is going to be non-existent in the future. Here's the other thing. You got to think about claims reps, right? No insurance company wants 20 claims reps sitting in an office during COVID-19 and trying to handle claims. So you're going to see more and more of them working from home or them relying on shops. So we're going to talk about this in a minute. Bottom line is photo estimating was on the horizon before COVID hit. And we know now that it has probably increased almost 40% of claims. Now, I want you to think about couples, right? So I like to use the name Ken and Barbie, right? Ken and, Ken and Barbie. But today, I'm going to use the term Leisha and Matt, right? So here's the deal, right? You got a husband and wife. They both get up in the morning. They get their kids off to school. They mom and dad both go to work, work full-time jobs, pick their kids up from school, get them home, take them to extracurricular activities, basketball, dance, whatever it is. Then they bring them home and then they do their homework and then they get them dinner and then they get them a bath and they get them in bed. And guess what? It's 930 at night. And now husband and wife finally say to themselves, what are we going to do about our wrecked car? Well, I don't know. Do you think your mom can help out with picking up the kids from school? Because we're not going to have a car and we don't have rental car coverage. And la bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, when you have moms and dads, husband and wives or two significant others both working, they're having these discussions about when can we coordinate getting our car fixed after hours. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to have the ability for someone to send photos to you to request an estimate so you get that hot lead. But more importantly, have the opportunity for them to be at a schedule an appointment for you with you knowing what your availability is versus having a call tomorrow when I'm busy at work. Now, here's the other thing. If you do send a customer an estimate, a lot of people say, well, Mike, if I send it to them, I'm going to be more expensive than anybody else. I'm not going to get the job, so I'm not going to do it. Well, here's what I got to tell you. I got two words for you, S-T-O-P, new word I-T, stop it. Do not just send the estimate. You need to sell the estimate. That's one of the things I love about Ryan Taylor, Body Shop Booster. When you send an estimate to a customer through Body Shop Booster, it automatically notifies you when the customer opens the email. So you can call them and say, you know, uh, Mr. Tran, have you had a chance to look at that estimate yet? And they're gonna be like, oh my God, how did you know? I was just looking at it. And now you can have a conversation with them. Another thing that Body Shop Booster does is Body Shop Booster allows you to embed a video talking about why your vehicle, I mean, your estimate might be more expensive than someone else's. I have a friend of mine, uh, a four-store MSO, and you know what he did? He made a video of a lady backing out of the driveway, and she has a, a little boy coming along on a tricycle, and all of a sudden her car slams on the brakes. And he says, our business may be more expensive, but when a little child backs out or walks, you know, goes in behind your car, you'll be glad that you had us fix your car. Things like that is what we got to do to sell our shop to the consumer. Now, here's the other thing. I wrote an estimate to replace a quarter panel on a Toyota Camry. 
Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't tell you that I'm the best estimator, but I think I'm above average. I'm not going to tell you I'm the best person to use Toyota's TIS website, but I believe I'm above average. To replace a quarter panel on a Toyota Camry, I had to pull 132 pages of OEM repair information. 132. Yeah, you heard that right. Replace a quarter panel. My estimate is over $15,000. I've got over 317 lines on my estimate. I have 132 pages of OEM documents that I had to pull and review all because of the replacement of the quarter panel. Now, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. If I wait till a car gets to my shop and then I start reviewing those OEM repair procedures, guess what? I'm going to get interrupted a ton. And you know what? It's going to take me two days to do that or I'm going to shortcut it because I'm too busy. And that's why I also like getting photos of the car in advance so I can get a jump start on researching the arm repair procedures, but more importantly, I can also use it for triaging and scheduling. So think outside the box. Now, let's talk about online reviews. Uh, there are many insurance companies as well as OEMs that if you're OEM certified or an insurance DRP, they say you gotta um, have um, use a CSI company. We wanna know if the customer's been kept informed, you delivered the vehicle on time as promised, was vehicle fixed right the first time. Here's what I'm gonna tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Online reviews are the CSI of the future. I will tell you that insurance companies as well as OEMs have come to the realization that a lot of people know how to game the system when it comes to CSI surveys, and that's why online reviews will be the CSI of the future. If you look at State Farm, State Farm in the history of State Farm never, ever, never, ever did CSI reviews. But here's the deal, right? Five, six years ago, Somebody would call their agent, State Farm agent and say, you'd have a shop in mind. They'd say, yeah, go to Metro Collision Center. And they, a consumer would go there sight unseen blindly because they trusted their agent. Today's consumers believe in this, trust but verify, trust but verify. Today's consumers, they might ask the insurance company, where should I take my car? But you know what they're going to do? They're going to go online and do their homework. They may ask their dealership, hey, who should I have fixed my Nissan? But they're still going to go online and do their homework. And what, when they go online to do their homework, you know what they're looking for is online reviews. You heard me say it right, online reviews. Let me give you an example. I have a good friend of mine, Greg Thompson. He's my best friend. And I'm over at Greg's house before COVID. And his son, Jared, comes over one day. And um, Greg said, hey, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm thinking about taking my wife you know, to dinner tonight. And, J and Greg said, where are you thinking about going, Jared? And Jared said, I'm thinking about going to Red Oak Bistro. And Greg said, oh, my God, you're going to love it. They have the best pizza. Later on that night, Jared happened to come by. And Greg said, how do you like Red Oak Bistro? And Jared said, I didn't go there, Dad. And he goes, what? He goes, yeah, I didn't go there. They had bad online reviews. This was a 25-year-old young man that took online reviews over the word of his own father. And ladies and gentlemen, what you need to understand is more and more consumers are going to go online to determine if whoever referred them is referring them to a good choice. And that's why State Farm now ties online Google reviews into their shop locator. But wait, it's not just State Farm. It's also now the OEMs. For example, Nissan. Now Nissan has online reviews tied into their shop locator. Why? So the consumers can validate, trust, but verify that this is really a good shop to go to. So ladies and gentlemen, what you need to understand is if you want to thrive and not just survive, you must have good online reviews. You've got to have good online reviews, ladies and gentlemen. It is the way of the future. Now, let's talk about dealerships, right? Here's an interesting statistic that I learned about from Ryan Taylor Body Shop Booster. Did you know that 41% of all vehicles that go through the service lane of a dealership or in need of some type of collision or auto body work. Yeah, 41% of the cars that go through a dealership or in need of some type of auto body work. And it's usually an average RO of about 900 to 1200 bucks. Now these are drivable vehicles. They're gonna be higher gross profit because it's probably more labor and less parts. And it's also gonna be quicker turnaround time, three, four day you know, cycle time, right? So let's look at the potential. Here's what I can tell you. The average dealership in the United States of America Small to average dealership processes about 100 cars a day through the service lane. Let's say there's 21 working days in a month. That's 2,100 cars a month times 41% of them are in need of auto body work. That's 861 vehicles times 12 months in a year. That's 10,000 cars a year that are in need of auto body work. If you can just capture 15% of those vehicles, that's 1,550 cars a year your shop could fix. And an average order of 1,000 bucks is 1.5 million. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a dealership body shop, you absolutely need to tap in to those cars going through your service lane. I have a client, Jerry Rosenbarker from Mohawk Honda up in Albany, New York. They are a Honda dealership, right? He was a DRP for seven insurance companies. I shared this data with him and we got him starting to focus on getting estimates from the service lane. 
and looking at cars and guess what? I'm not anti-insurance, but he has zero DRPs today. And they actually just had their best month of their entire shop's existence the last month in the middle of the COVID-19. Why? Because they focused on this. Now, if you're not a dealership shop, but you do work for a dealership, is it worth you getting photo estimate in the hands of their service writers so you can look at these estimates and, and, and write estimates on them and try to capture them? Or is it worth you having somebody in the service lane in the mornings when cars come in? Ladies and gentlemen, there's a ton of opportunity here. So what are we talking about? What we're really talking about is capture rate or closing ratio. I absolutely would encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, that anybody that schedules an appointment with you, make sure that if they don't schedule an appointment, you record the reason why they didn't schedule and you automatically follow up with them the very next day. And if they still don't schedule, follow up with them three days later. If they still don't schedule, follow up with them five days later. I have a large client, right? A large client that... um has um it's a dealership client that has over i'll just say they have over 50 body shops across the united states right we focused on their dealership body shops calling up on anybody that did not schedule an appointment for an estimate then calling them the day after they wrote the estimate and you know what they did they captured 20 percent of those cars now here's the next thing i'm gonna tell you if it's COVID and i'm standing around right now i am absolutely following up on every assignment i get as a drp or every assignment I get as a non-DRP through CCC's Open Shop. If it's COVID right now and I'm not busy, I'm going back to every single estimate I've written since January and I'm calling those customers. And here's what I'm going to do. I want you to write this word down. The word is scarcity. Scarcity, right? So I learned this from Ryan Taylor, right? When people think something is scarce, they make an immediate buying decision. Let's talk about toilet paper, right? You know, when man, you went in the stores and there was no toilet paper. If you ever went in a store and there was a, a roll of toilet paper, what did you do? You bought it whether you needed it or not. Why? Because it was scarce. So ladies and gentlemen, here's what I would do. If I wrote an estimate for a customer and they didn't schedule an appointment, I would call them and I'd be like, um, you know, um, you know, um, Miss Anderson, look, um, I know you didn't schedule an appointment for your car. I'm not pressuring you. I'm just letting you know that right now with COVID, there's some challenges getting parts and some parts are going on back order. If you think that, you know, parts are a little bit scarce, if you think you're going to get your car fixed in the future, if you want to just give us a 10% deposit, we can at least get your parts ordered so we can secure your parts. So whenever you do want to get your car fixed, we have the parts because because of COVID, this could get a little bit bad or parts are scarce. Use scarcity to get that customer to make a, an emotional decision to commit and make an appointment with you. So ladies and gentlemen, record who schedules appointments with you and who does not. And if they don't, follow up with them and use scarcity to get them to emotionally commit to make an appointment or give you a financial deposit. Now, for any of you that are Nissan or Fiat Chrysler certified, Nissan and Fiat Chrysler, they had a conference uh, in Orlando at Disney World last year, right? Or actually this year in February. And one of the things that they did is they took all their Nissan and Fiat certified shops through a tour of Disney. And Disney talked about something called a good show and a bad show. So a good show is, here's a picture of what a ha happy Mickey Mouse looks like. Here's a bad showing of a Mickey Mouse. I mean, a man's got a cigarette in one hand and Mickey's got a 40 ounce in the other, right? At the end of the day, that's a bad Mickey Mouse. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm encouraging you to do is go into your management system and see what your referral or source report looks like in your management system. Here's an example of a shop that uses PropInet. I go to their shop and look at it. Referred by. What's it say for a source? No referred by. No referred by. No referred by. No referred by. Or if I go over here, it says business referral. Or over here, insurance agent, insurance agent, DRP, DRP. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? That doesn't tell me nothing at all. I mean this in love, but if your source report looks like that, I mean this in love, but you suck. Because ladies and gentlemen, this doesn't give me any detail. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to know, how did you find out about me, Miss Melissa? I found out about you on the internet, Mike. Well, how on the internet? Was our website? Was our Google business listing page? Was it a, the Nissan shop locator? Oh, no. You know what? It was actually your Google business listing page. Now, that's detail. That's what I'm looking for. I don't just want to know what insurance agent told you. What's the name of that agent? Why? So I might go thank them for sending me business. Ladies and gentlemen, the attention is in the detail. Now, here's another valuable resource I find a lot of people don't take advantage of, and that's something called the Enterprise Body Shop Scorecard. Enterprise can provide a scorecard to you, and this is free. Yeah, you heard me say it, F-R-E-E, -E, free, right? Where Enterprise will share this with you, showing you 
a year over year comparison is to how many customers you had that had, for example, Geico or Progressive or Allstate. Now, if I look at this shop's data, you know what? January through March of 2018 compared to January, March of 2017, this shop actually did more work for Geico, but guess what declined for me? My progressive jobs. So you know what? Maybe I need to have a conversation and figure out what's going on. If I'm a DRP, what progressive, why might I get more work? If I'm not a DRP, are they steering from me or what's going on? So at the end of the day, this is an awesome report. This report also shows me what my average labor hours are compared to the market. And it also shows me what my arms utilization same day updates. Lots of good data on here. But the reason I'm showing this report is while this report is limited only to people that are in rental cars for enterprise, it still provides you some insights as to if your car count or claims count is declining year over year. And this is a great data. And when Trent joins us in a few moments and I turn the screen over to him, I'm sure um, if any of you have never seen this report before, reach out to me and we will hook you up with Enterprise and get this report sent to you. Now let's talk about why capture is so important. Let's say a shop's doing $1.5 million a year in sales. Your closing ratio is 60%. That means you actually wrote $2.5 million in estimates. Let's say you moved your closing ratio to 85%. That's a 25% improvement. That's an additional $625,000. Let's say your gross profit percentage was 40%. We know most shops are 43 to 45%. That's still a quarter of a million dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot say this enough, and I mean this in love. Please understand the intent of my heart is I love you. I want to see you kick some butt. But ladies and gentlemen, you got to start looking at how many cars are coming to your door. Now, here's the deal. Prior to COVID, most shops, if a customer didn't schedule an appointment, they're like, ah, who cares? I got, you know, I'm, I'm backed up for two weeks. We really didn't care. But with COVID, when things got down and we had no cars coming into the door, automatically started to care. We And when we started calling up on customers, following up, getting aggressive. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, our sales approach totally changed with consumers because we slowed down. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where I'm telling you COVID is a blessing. This co co we had gotten fat and lazy and complacent because severity increasing and there were so many cars on the road that we really weren't focused on looking at capturing and getting the keys or how many cars were coming to the door. So COVID was a wake up call that I'm telling you right now, we will be thankful for in the future. So. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Claims count is going to continue to decline, right? It's going to decline because of ADAS. It's inevitable. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to get your team to focus on following up on estimates. You've got to get your team to focus on selling your estimate and selling your shop. You've got to get your team to learn to follow up on assignments from DRPs or open shop assignments for non-DRPs in a more timely manner. We need to build these best practices now during COVID because that will pay huge dividends for us as claims count declines in the future. Now, with that said, I want to turn it over to my friend Trent Tinsley with Enterprise. Mike, can I interrupt you for a sec? Yes, Before we go on to Trent? Okay, we have a question and it goes back to the online reviews. So before we get to Trent, I thought you might want to cover it. Uh, the question is regarding um, the online reviews like Yelp. Do you think consumers trust Yelp for reputable body shops rather than word of mouth? So here's what I will tell you. Google is the number one most trusted online search that people use, right? People tend to not credit Yelp as much as they do Google. However, with that said, here's what I will tell you. With that said, the future is voice activated searches. Right now, most people will go to a computer or their phone and they'll go to like Google and they'll type in best auto body near me or best pizza place near me. Just so you know, the top three search terms that consumers use, whether it's Google or Yelp or anything, is how, what, and best. How do I do this? What does this mean? Or best. Best is the number one search term category for a service, right? Uh, what is the best pizza delivery near me? What is the best dentist near me? What is the best auto body shop near me? Matter of fact, Google even populates now with the near me. And also the only way you can show up under the best category is you have to have a four star rating or better, right? So the way of the future, the way of the future is voice activated searches. 50% of consumers today don't even type to do a search. They do a voice activated search. Matter of fact, my phone's in front of me right now and I'm not sure if you hear this or not, right? What's the best auto body shop near Ala Moana, Hawaii? 
Well, I forgot to say, hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Well, it looks like my, my speaker is not working for y'all, but hey, Siri. What's the best auto body shop near Ala Moana, Hawaii? The highest rated option I see is Kakako Auto Glass on Queen Street in Honolulu, which averages 5.0 stars. Want to try that one? Thank you. Yes. Great. I can call that location or get directions to it. What would you like me to do? So I don't know if y'all can hear that or not, ladies and gentlemen, but it gave me a store and said this store has a five star rating. And then it offered to call that shop or give me directions. See, here's the deal. When I manually type a search for best auto body shop near me, it gives me like the top three or four choices. But when I do a voice activated search, it only gives me one choice. And here's the deal. The future of cars is connected vehicles. Where cars are connected to the internet, think about like GM OnStar, right? Or Lexus Safety Connect. And people will be driving down the road and they'll ask their car, hey, you know, Siri, what's the best pizza place near me? Or what's the best auto body shop near me? So let's get back to your question about Yelp. Here's the question here, right? Uh, if you're using an iPhone, it uses Yelp for its search engine. If you're using an Android, it uses Google. So I will tell you, most consumers trust Google over Yelp, but Yelp is still a player because it's what iPhone interacts with. So I hope that answered your question. If not, um, I'm going to go to the chat panel here very quickly, and I'm going to put in my number, Mike Anderson, 301-535-3333. And if you'd like, you and I did not, you do not feel like I answered your question, feel free to call me directly, and I'll be glad to help them. But Back to your question, people trust Google more than Yelp, but they actually trust Yelp more than word of mouth, meaning their next door neighbor. So they will still go online and trust but verify. That would be my question, and thank you for the question, Joshua. What's the next question we have, Melissa? Okay, um, well, we have some auto body students watching this webinar, and they will be graduating tomorrow, so congratulations. Um, what advice would you give to students just entering the collision industry for them to thrive as entry-level techs in the industry, and how can they stay engaged? Here's what my advice would be. First of all, congratulations, class of 2020, for graduating from your uh, college there, and what a great instructor you have with Marlene Spence. Lady is awesome, right? So congratulations, high five to you. The second advice I would give you is don't be short-sighted. Don't go interview a job and only take a job based on what the starting pay is going to be. Do not look at the starting pay. I understand money is important, but don't look at the starting pay. Look at how well equipped is the shop. Look at what type of training are they going to offer you. Look at is the shop clean. Look at what is their quality of work. Look at, do they have a career path? Meaning, can you be promoted throughout? And will they send you to training? Look at those things. That's my advice. Too many people will say, well, this guy's willing to pay me or this shop guy or girls want to pay me, you know, 600 a week. And this guy's willing to pay me, you know, $500 a week. I'm going to go work for the guy or girl that's going to give me 600 a week. And that's short-sighted. Ladies and gentlemen, find the shop that's going to invest into you. The second thing is don't let all those old coots out there brainwash you and tell you how bad this industry is. This is a freaking awesome industry. There's good money to be made. It's a great industry. And don't buy into all those old grouchy boneheads, right? And last but not least, if you ever need something from Mike Anderson, you all call me and I got your back and I'm on your team. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Any other questions, Melissa? Or can I go ahead and introduce Trent? Go ahead and introduce Trent. So ladies and gentlemen, here's something else you need to understand. Enterprise, and this is my words, not Enterprise's words. Enterprise has a, like I call it a sister company called Integral. Now, Integral is a network management tool. I will tell you there are multiple insurance companies and multiple OEM car manufacturers that use Integral to manage their network of shops. That means there's OEM certification programs where they use Integral to manage their shops, to figure out what their shops they have on their program and who they should get. There's insurance companies that do as well. Here's the next thing you understand. So fact number one, insurers and OEMs use Integral's network management profile to manage their shops. Fact number two, every shop has a free profile in Integral and you may not even be aware of it. Fact number three, most shops have not ever updated their Integral profile in many, many years. 
So here's the deal. You might have bought a new frame machine, a new welder, a new paint gun, a new paint booth. And if you haven't updated your Integral profile saying, hey, we now have this equipment, then OEMs and insurers don't know that about your business. And it could be hindering the referrals that come to your business. So you want to make sure you absolutely, I'm going to tell you right now, don't delay, do it today. Uncle Mike said so, right? Or as my friends in Hawaii call me, Lee said, uh, he said to do it, right? Update your profile in Integral. So if you choose to want to do work, whether it's an OEM or insurer, you're giving them insight into your business. So take advantage of this. So with that said, Trent, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir, where um, we're going to give you, I'm going to give you uh, actually control. Trent, where you can actually advance my slides. So uh, it says give keyboard and mouse. So Trent, take it away, sir, and share with the shops about how they can update their Integral profiles. First of all, Mike, thank you. I, I, I learn it's something new every time I, I hear you present. So uh, I'd also like to thank uh, the, the class of 2020 as well, because uh, you guys are, are entering at a crucial time in an industry in which everything's changing. And with everything being so technology focused, uh, your capabilities are really going to shine in this new world. But that's part Amen. of uh, why Enterprise uh, created uh, a new division called Integral. It's really made up of the uh, a combination of several companies uh, that uh, Enterprise acquired, primarily in initially for our own internal use, but also to help the industry. Because we don't charge shops a thing for any of this information. Uh, that's something that uh, that we work with insurance companies and OEMs and fleet companies on. But what the Integral application does, let's see if it'll advance the slide there, Mike, is the Integral application has a profile for each collision facility, in which you're able to put all of your information in. Your information uh, could be just simply uh, what is your website, your phone numbers, your hours of operations, your days of the week. Could be everything from your certificates of insurance. What's your garage keepers, workmen's cops, general liability. All of these pieces of information are administrative burdens to, that you potentially have to share a lot of times with insurance companies or OEs as part of their programs. The idea behind Integral was from an MSO uh, operator in Wisconsin that created the initial uh, piece of software that allowed this information to be housed in one central place that can then be shared across all of the different customers who might actually need or, or have uh, requirements for this info. This also includes items such as OEM programs. Now there's things in here for services. Mike, I always appreciate your feedback as well as others in the industry who are always giving us tips and ideas on how to improve and highlight your services. COVID really uh, kind of accelerated some of those items because as insurance companies and OEs were going to more virtual uh, uh, capabilities, they needed to understand what their repair facilities could do beyond just simple uh, equipment requirements. They were looking to, can you uh, install your own glass? Do you have on-site mechanical repairs? Do you have on-site PDR? All the information they're looking for in order to create that expectations, kind of that liquid expectations that Mike talked about earlier in the presentation. So the inside here is a lot of information though, and this is all filled out by the shop. This is not controlled by the insurance company or the OEM. This is not shared with just anyone. This is actually a part of the programs uh, and shared with those companies that, that are integral customers. You get to control what information is put in, in here because after all, this is your information. It's trying to drive more business to your facilities by highlighting the capabilities that uh, your body shop possesses. Part of that is also from a locator standpoint. Now, everyone has a locator. There are locators everywhere. You see them online. Mike showed a couple of different ones, but these are often integrated directly into the insurance company's claim systems or powering behind the scenes, the OEM's locator. And part of what the, uh, they'll do is actually create filters and rules that look for things like these services, like OEM uh, certifications that your shop might possess, so that when they're doing searches, they'll actually find those shops that have this. And those are all validated directly from the manufacturers as well. So if I could just echo something, Mike, that you talked about is just upgrading that profile 
especially things about photo estimating, touchless claims, electronic signatures, whether that's for repair authorizations or diagnostic or, or calibration uh, authorizations, as well as on online, online appointments. That's something that we're continually going to bring value to you guys for. Mike, I'll also put my phone number uh, in the chat, my email. If you guys have any questions, if you want to sign up for this, be glad to send you a link. Just drop me a line and uh, we'll make it happen for you. And again, this is free. Mike, uh, just be uh, cognizant of time. I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Trent. So here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Don't delay. Do it today. Update your Integral profile. Get your username and password. If you don't know it, reach out to Trent. Make sure all your OEM certifications are listed. Make sure if you offer photo estimating that you've selected that option. Make sure if you offer touchless claims, electronic signature, online appointments, update your profile, ladies and gentlemen. This is an absolute must. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna wrap this up in about the next five to 10 minutes. So here's all what you understand. I'm gonna give you my predictions for the future. First of all, things will change. Photo estimating and virtual reinspections is going to be pushed to the forefront of all carriers. There are some carriers that, you know what, they had photo estimating capabilities to be able to deal with COVID um, when this hit. There were other insurance companies that had never embraced that technology and they were left, you know, with their britches down, right? And I will tell you, they are trying to figure out how to play catch up. I will also tell you that I absolutely agree. You will never hear an argument from me that the existing way photo estimating and virtual inspections is done is a painful situation for the shop. But I also recognize that you have to understand we had to start somewhere. And eventually it will get better, especially with artificial intelligence. I will also tell you, as Mike Jones says from Discover Leadership, you can be the wind or you can be the flag, right? And by the way, if any of you have never taken Discover Leadership, I encourage you to do that. But you can be the wind or the flag. And so I encourage you, instead of complaining about the solutions, to embrace it and be the person that helps dictate what the, the outcome looks like five years from now. Now, here's the other thing I will tell you. You absolutely will see some shops close, no doubt in my mind. I will tell you, I think there are going to be a lot of acquisition opportunities. So if I'm you, I'm meeting with my bank, I'm meeting with SBA, and I'm trying to figure out how I can get a credit line or financing so I can make some acquisitions, and I'm looking to grow. I will also tell you again that a new insurance model will absolutely uh, come out of this, and I'm going to tell you what I think that looks like here in a moment. Second thing I want to share with you is I think it's important that you're transparent with your staff. I understand that, um, you know, shop owners have had to make some hard decisions and furlough or lay off some people. I had to do the same as a business owner. I get it. But I think we have to be transparent and honest with our staff in any decisions whenever possible so they will be vested in the company. And also we bring them back. They understand we just had to do what we had to do. So here's what I predict. Ladies and gentlemen, I predict that as we start to get on the backside of this COVID-19, that people are gonna be stir crazy. Man, they are gonna have cabin fever. And what they're gonna do is once they get, and right now that every state is in a different phase of reopening, but I will tell you as each state starts to reopen and you get to phase three, phase four, phase five, people are gonna be stir crazy and cabin fever. And you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna hit the roads in unprecedented numbers. You're gonna see more vehicle miles traveled than we've probably ever seen before. And what this means is, this is gonna mean more accidents. No doubt in my mind. The second thing is you have people that financially have used up their savings accounts. And not only are they gonna go back to their full-time jobs, but they're gonna also take on a part-time job to help build their savings back up again. So people working full-time and part-time, what does that mean? More cars on the road, more vehicle miles traveled, more accidents. I will tell you that in China, trends are showing that consumers in China are avoiding public transportation. After COVID, the last thing they want to do is they don't want to be standing shoulder to shoulder with somebody on a bus or a subway. And they're also, they're not so crazy about getting an Uber or a Lyft with someone they don't know. So people are going to avoid ride sharing and public transportation. That means more people are going to drive on their own. That means more vehicle miles traveled. That means more accidents. I will also tell you that people are going to be making up for their birthdays and anniversaries and rescheduled weddings. And here's the other thing on vacations. People are not going to be flying. They're only going to take vacations that they can drive to. I will give you an example. So I've been on the road every week for the past four weeks. I can tell you four weeks ago, I was in Columbus, Ohio. I flew out of Washington, D.C., a major airport. I walked right up to the ticket counter 
nobody there in front of me. Only one person in line of me in security in front of me, and there were only 13 people on my plane. I can tell you three weeks ago, I was in Miami, Florida, and when I got off the plane in Miami, Florida, I counted 28 people in the entire airport, and that included people that work there. So ladies and gentlemen, people are gonna take vacations, but it's gonna be a vacation they can drive to. So all these things, delayed birthday celebrations, graduations, anniversaries, rescheduled weddings, all of these things are going to be more people out on the road, more vehicle miles traveled, more accidents. Bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I, here's what I, not what I believe, here's what I know. The dam is cracking. I am talking to shops. Hawaii would be the exception. I will tell you, I'm talking to shops around the rest of the United States, and everybody said they're seeing some cracks in the dam. And their work volume is getting back up to about 70% of what it used to be, and 80% in some cases. But ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. While the dam is cracking right now, I predicted very soon the dam is going to burst. It's not just going to crack. It's going to burst. And when that happens, shops are going to be flooded with work. But here's the other thing. Insurance companies are going to be flooded with work. And a lot of the insurance companies are not allowing their appraisers to get back into shops until either September or in some cases even January. So what does that mean? That means if you're not a DRP, you are probably going to get a lot of open shop assignments through CCC, even if you're not a DRP. If you're DRP, you will probably see even more claims volume. I know there's one major insurance company right now that I shared with you that is looking to see if some of their employees will take, uh, you know, like um, uh, early severance package or early retirement. They're reducing their staff by 30 to 40%. What does that mean? They're going to either have to add more DRP shops or handle more assignments like, you know, through non-DRP shops. And here's the other thing I found. I've talked to some shops that are not a DRP for anyone, right? I talked to a guy named uh, Jeff up at Eddie's up in, uh, you know, Kansas. Um, I've talked to another non-DRP shop that I know uh, that's in North Carolina. And you know what they've all told me? Because appraisers are not reinspecting things, insurance companies are sending them assignments. They're writing estimates, uploading photos, and they're getting approvals even as non-DRPs. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think insurance companies have found we're spending all this manpower to go out there and reinspect these cars for two, three, four hundred bucks. But we're spending seven or eight hundred dollars in a company car and a person and resources. We don't have to micromanage this anymore. And I actually think that you're going to see the insurers start to allow non-DRP shops to write estimates and get approvals. This is going to create new opportunities for both DRP and non-DRP shops. Here's the next thing I believe. And again, it's not just that I believe it. It's what I know. Right now, people say, well, you know what, Mike? The insurance companies are nitpicking my estimates. Yeah, you are, because that's because the estimator is sitting at home and has nothing else to do but nitpick you. But I think that is short lived. I also believe that when the dam breaks, shops are going to be loaded up with work. And what's going to happen is cycle time is going to go through the roof. Now, here's the other thing I will tell you. If you're in an area where you compete against a major MSO, a lot of your MSOs have performance based service agreements that says we agree to always guarantee severity or CSI or whatever. And what happened was their insurance DRP scores got you know, reset back to zero, and then they were probably ahead of you on the scorecards, right? But here's the thing. I came in the industry in November of 1985, and for the first time in my life, if you're a DRP, the complete market is reset. Everyone is going back to zero, right? I want you to think about it like a NASCAR race, right? You had the leaders were way out front, and you had people that were almost a lap down. Well, guess what COVID-19 was? It was a white flag in the middle of our race. And guess what? The leaders and the people at the back of the pack have all got grouped together again. And now we're all in the same lap and we're all bunched together. And we're just waiting for the flag to drop to say there's a new race. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you what you need to be knowing is that the entire market has been reset and there is a new time. And you need to understand that speed is and will be everything. And you need to figure out the speed now. Now, I'm not suggesting you cut corners and do unquality work. That's not, not what I'm saying. Don't misunderstand me. I'm talking about you need to reassess your organization to figure out when this dam breaks and you get flooded with cars, how can you process cars doing safe and proper repairs as your primary focus? How can you do it quickly so you can capitalize on the financial opportunity so you can build your coffers and your savings accounts back? And ladies and gentlemen, speed is and will be everything. So ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand when this dam breaks, there's going to be a ton of work. So what do you need to do? You need to train now. You need to prepare now, and you need to focus on these three things, service, speed, and accuracy. And when I say speed, I don't mean just how fast you fix a car. 
I'm talking about speed that when a customer wants an estimate, you get them as soon as possible. I'm talking about speed that when you get an insurance assignment, you jump on it as soon as possible, right? Because ladies and gentlemen, if you train now and you prepare now while you're slow, when that dam breaks and that new flag drops, it will be a new race, a new time. And if you practice and work on speed, you will be prepared to dominate. So Melissa, it has been my absolute honor. And I just want to see if you have any questions at all. Please, everybody, please don't mistake my passion for arrogance. I love what I do. And I got to tell you, I think whether you're a DRP or non-DRP shop, COVID a year from now will be the best thing that ever happened to us. It's going to get rid of some of the shops that need to go out of business. Number two is it's a complete market reset. And number three is it helped to reveal to us some things that we might have been getting a little bit complacent about that we need to improve upon so we can thrive as ADAS has a negative impact on claims count. So, Melissa, what questions? Well, I don't have any right now, um, but I will follow up with everybody who's on this presentation and we'll send uh, your information. And we are recording, as we said, so we'll post it on our YouTube channel. And so we, we definitely um, urge everybody to go to our channel to look for past webinars. And we appreciate your comments and your thumbs up if you like it. Uh, with that, um, thank you, Mike. Excellent job. Right. Just so informative. Um, everybody's thank saying thank you. I just want to uh, give a quick shout out, Melissa, if I may. A quick shout out sure. to Arnold at Highline. A quick shout out to Audrey at Kemperley. Audrey, I miss you. Young lady, hope you're well. Quick shout out to Brian at Highline. Uh, oh, hey, quick shout out to Corey Zimmerman. Corey, I love you and mean it, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, a quick shout out to uh, Greg Schneider at Highline. I uh, just want to give some shouts out to some people I know. A uh, quick shout out to um, John at Craftsman Auto Body. John, it's been a long time. I hope you're doing okay, sir. Uh, a quick shout out to Alicia Santiago. I uh, hope Matt's doing well. Uh, please give him my best. A quick shout out again to Marlene Spence. Marlene, I hope all is well. A uh, quick uh, shout out to Renee. Uh, Renee, I hope you're doing well. Missed you last time I was there. Hey, Reese and Dale at Auto Body Hawaii. Uh, awesome shop. Great work. Hope you guys are doing well. Hey, shout out to Rory Chandler at Central. Rory, hope you're doing well. Give Jody my best and everybody else. And uh, Tim Gruber, classic uh, shout out. If there's anybody I missed, I, I'm sorry, but I just want to say I appreciate you all and your friendship over the years. And with that said, Melissa, I'll turn it back to you to close out our webinar. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that concludes our webinar, and we'll be in touch with future training opportunities. And thanks again, Mike. Thanks, Trent. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Be safe. Take care. Bye-bye.